storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the SIF. Great. Let's get to that emitter. got some scars on her. It adds character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. Yeah, of course I do. Starfleet's an open door. We just have to walk through it. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Calibration. Careful. Too much action and harmonics will deflect the alignment. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. Now I know exactly who to turn to when I have questions. Questions are more Commander Ermont's territory. Captain Solano primarily relies on my knowledge and expertise when he needs answers. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for First Officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario. But not outside the realm of possibility. That's very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being. But you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned. Just curious, that's all. Listen. Can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. 
Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. Mr. Westbrook, if you have some kind of problem with me, and you just met me so it has nothing to do with me, you're gonna have to figure out how to get over it. Because I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere. Do you read me? Loud and clear. I'll stick to science. That is what this ship is for. Very well. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. On screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the ship. Estimated time to impact two minutes. Red alert. Bye. Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shields. Petrosia, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I need a heading. We've only got one shot. Understood. On my command. Raise shields! This is it! All hands, brace for impact! supercharge the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. Blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one fail-safe circuits? Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Safe override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Dear 
units to Resolute. The fail-safes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? What if the discharge is coalesced? It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. Climb up the pylon. Not that there's really an up, but you know. dampening is down to 60%. the EPS flow to the port nacelle, we have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. Adjusters reset to neutral. to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, choke up your... from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put him through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. We have crew outside and are looking for the we safest way We have people to... on this station. If that mooring arm breaks, we could lose dozens of crew. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull. 
which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Chara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. Starbase, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Mark! We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. Hurt and unconscious. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But, Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There's an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. Go in there now. I'm at the auxiliary hatch.
are safe, bringing the Sith fully online. Do it. <laughs> 